to really have an understanding of what I was doing and that I was actually, that I was stepping into the role of being a leader mm -hmm. of my team, not just a developer who hired two other developers and was still building websites. So that's a very interesting distinction. So yeah. how did you do that? Were there, and, and further develop your company, were there courses you took or mentors you had or books you were reading? How did you go from what you just described, a developer who hired people to then actually being the leader and CEO of a company? I will say it's all of the above. Um, I had started working with a business coach right before I started hiring people. Um, and being in that atmosphere, what was great is that she was wonderful. Like she had a really solid, she was actually, so coincidentally, she was a singer songwriter turned business coach and leader. Mm -hmm. So she was, you know, I, I felt a kind of an affinity for her journey as well. And seeing kind of like my journey was somewhat similar in that we were both very creative people, but stepping into this more business role. But what I loved about working with her is that I wasn't just working with her. Like I was attending retreats with all of these other business owners too. Mm. So I, you know, I say as much as what she taught me shaped me and my business, it was also being with those other business owners and like speaking to them, learning from them, listening to their challenges and struggles. Even sometimes like they weren't, I mean, it's not like we were all website developers hanging out together. I mean, we had people who made custom jewelry and who were accountants and who ran spas. Like it was just a really wide range of people. So um, I was in a great position just to kind of like listen and learn. And some of these people had bigger businesses than I did. So they had different challenges and, but they were challenges that were starting to come up for me. Mm -hmm. So that was really instrumental. And then, you know, obviously because this is an audio recording, no one can see the large stack of books behind me, but I have three bookshelves in my office that are like just top to bottom in books. Um, I've, again, it's the, the academic in me. Like I love yeah. learning. I love reading. And sometimes it's not always about um, reading and like hyper putting everything into place. It's just about putting the ideas in my brain and watching what naturally emerges. So I, I almost kind of feel like sometimes it's like a collage where an idea will come up and I'll be like, wait, I know this book and this book and this book, they all had really different ideas about this, but how do I synthesize them in a way that works well for me? Mm -hmm. And then how do I maybe bring that to a coach that I'm working with to get some feedback or talk to a client about, you know, feedback as well. So that's um, the ideas from the book have, you know, they've always kind of just floated around in my mind, but um, I will say like being in a group and, and, and this has gone on for me. Like I have never, stopped being in groups of really brilliant business owners because there's so much magic that happens not only when you're learning from someone who really knows what they're talking about but also when you're just learning from people who are, are in it with you you know it you just feel human with them which is wonderful oh, yeah so i want to ask you about uh projects and how you approach projects so i'm i'm again i'm there's a couple of interesting things that are back to back on your LinkedIn, which is why I want to bring them up. So you started a podcast called the next leaders podcast that lasted for six months. And in 2019, you've also expanded your company to do um, a, another edition called North star sites. So when you look at expanding and potentially contracting, like what mm -hmm. decisions do you make of this is what I need to do at this time because it's good for the business and for my brand. And then how did you then couple that with closing a podcast that maybe had a similar type of idea to what you were doing and realizing it wasn't what you wanted to do? If that yeah. was. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so those are really good questions. And um, I think it's remembering the bandwidth that you have and that you can always ask for help. So the biggest challenge of the podcast, so the podcast was actually me and a friend of mine. And we actually, I think we did it, we did it for six months up into the point that she had her second child. Okay. And then after second baby came along, obviously scheduling was a little bit more complex, but also I was doing all of the audio editing myself um, and running my business too. Mm -hmm. Um, and it became a little overwhelming between like 
scheduling my schedule, her schedule, the schedule of the people that we were interviewing, doing the audio editing, getting everything set up, doing, you know, like both of us doing social media to, to push it out. And, um, for me, it made sense to shut that down one because she, she genuinely needed time with her new baby, mm -hmm. but also because, um, I just, you know, I, I, I felt like it wasn't, um, it didn't have the direction that I needed to, it to have as part of a bigger overarching picture. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not to say that I maybe won't go back to podcasting at some point, but I think, you know, when you're creative, it's very natural to start side projects, but I think you have to step back and look at how they fit into the bigger picture of what you want to do or simply what you want your life to look like. Mm -hmm. I did not want my life to look like I was, you know, sitting all day on a Saturday when I could be outside audio editing. Um, and, and that's happened to me at, at different points with different things. It's happened to me recently where I realized that the only way that I could write an article was to lose my Sunday, hmm. which meant losing my time with my family, with, with my partner, you know, things like that with my nephews, um, all those kind of details. So, um, with North star, North star really was like, it was something that was already living within alchemy and aim. Mm -hmm. And it just made sense from a marketing perspective to pull it out. And the reason that I felt that it worked so well is because I had a team, like there's a team for North star. It's not like Brandy's trying to do it herself. And, you know, losing Saturdays to, to working with North Star clients. Like, I'm involved in the process, but I am not driving the process. And so that's, for me, that's kind of like, it's part of the bigger picture of what I do and how I want to help people. Um, and some of the expertise I have to give and, you know, highlighting team members' expertise as well. Um, but it doesn't require me to, to, to drive it in the same way. I'm still leading it but the team really kind of coordinates and handles everything makes it so much more doable hmm. really. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of like, those are always my considerations to when like starting and stopping new things. Um, you know, sometimes you start going down that path of creating something new, but I would say, you know, if it, if it solely relies upon you to drive it and you already have a lot of other responsibilities, it becomes very difficult to maintain it. Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas if you can create some, I, there's something wonderful about creating something also that you can share with others and that others can grow with you and co-create with you. That's really exciting to me. So that's kind of how everything that I look to do now, um, I, I really look for, for kind of like those pieces of like, what can I, what can I start and lead, but not necessarily have to be the one who maintains. It's also something I know about my own work style. Like I have, I have ideas. I'm totally an ideas person, but it's nice when you can give those ideas to other people and they can even iterate on them for you and like grow them and evolve them into something even, you know, more brilliant than you initially imagined because you've got these fantastic people working with you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious because of the fact that you are, you know, your business is digital strategy, website development, when you speak with clients, how do you approach the idea of uh, a digital experience versus a digital presence? And, and what does that mean? And Yeah, so, so for so long, we really have thought about websites or even social media profiles as like things that we should have online so that when people Google us, they find us and it's just like confirming evidence. Mm -hmm. um, but especially today, like in today's world, we're online more than ever before. And having the consistency across platforms and also thinking about how you lead people, not just in conversation, but also in copy and in the way that you structure what you have online. I always think like particularly a website is like, how do you lead people in a website mm -hmm. so that they feel guided? So they know what the next step is. So they're not you know, clicking into your menu, trying to figure out where the information they need is. Like, how do you guide them and shape, shape the experience that they even have of you online? So that's, you know, copy, it's images. Um, it's, it's how easy the buttons are to find or, you know, what the next page is, what, 
what's the story you're telling? What's your story that you're telling? And what's, what's the story of transformation that you're telling as well? Because that's really what we, we really like latch onto. Like we love transformations, you know, if I had started out as a website developer and always been a website developer, I probably wouldn't be as an interesting person. And the reality is I wouldn't have as much, um, just wealth of knowledge to, to pull from um, if I had solely been in one field the entire time. Um, so that's, you know, that's really what I think about is like, it's not, it's not just enough these days to just be online or just to have a website. Like you really have to think about what the content on the website is telling people and even like the connection point, how easy is it for someone to connect with you? How hard do you make it? Like I was trying to make reservations at a um, restaurant last night and nowhere on the website does it say anything about whether they take reservations or not. And then suddenly I'm like, wait, I have to call them, but they're, they don't even have their phone number on the website. And I'm like, why are they making this so hard? I just want to book a nice dinner at their restaurant. Like this is, I'm just trying to do something simple and, and especially like something obvious and simple like that. I also, you know, there was nothing on their website about, um, what it, were they doing outdoor dining or not, or what measures they had taken for coronavirus? Like just, it wasn't there. Um, so like then I, as the visitor have to work that much harder to, to get the information I need. So that's really what I think about when it comes to like digital experience. It's like, how easy are you making it for people? Are you guiding them? Are you using language that's reflective of who you are? Because I can guarantee you people want that they want your personality in there. They don't want you to talk to them like in, in a quote unquote, you know, like business manner, like mm -hmm. they want you to be a human being, but we really, we crave that, especially now, especially because we have to do through so much through computers and phones. Like we crave more humanity. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I think that's a great point. I, uh, I know in a similar experience, I've been going through a lot of other people's websites just because I'm trying to you know, reschedule vet appointments and dentist appointments and everything else that I wouldn't have just spent on time on their website and trying to get information, updated information about hours or what's available or what's even possible or even contact information. You're right. has been, unless the company really made it a priority in the beginning, it's been a difficult experience of just trying to get a hold of somebody to schedule my car maintenance and all kinds of yeah. stuff. So that's, I think that's, that's great to think about the, the actual experience somebody has on your site and the storytelling part of that. But so that being like a major key, what other opportunities are you noticing that people are missing that they sh should, could easily, let's say, turn up the volume to, to fill in the gaps? I mean, I, I think it's, it's telling their story too. That's, you know, that's the nicest thing. Like we, we really, again, we crave humanity and we crave stories. Like mm -hmm. we don't just want information. We want information in context and whether that's, you know, sometimes that's going to be um, your story as business owner. It may be the story of your team members or employees. Um, you know, like I, uh, there's a, a gym in my area that I belong to and it's an independent gym and um, the owner's been phenomenal, like really phenomenal about how he treats his staff during this time, taking care of them, making sure that they're paid. They know that they have responsibilities as well to teach classes online and things like that. But, you know, hearing like the story of what he's doing, um, but then also their individual stories of what they're doing during this time, like it just, you know, or what their clients are doing, it just shapes, it shapes um, our perspective and our loyalty too. Mm -hmm. So that's, I feel like, you know, one of the biggest things that's potentially missing from um, companies and what they're doing online during this time is, is just telling the stories to build the loyalty. Like the companies that um, there have been some, you know, businesses that I've, I've done business with in the past that I probably won't do business with in the future because I know how they've treated their people during this time and it hasn't been good. Mm -hmm. um, where they, you know, they haven't, they, they haven't been communicative and told stories about what they are doing. They're just waiting for someone to ask them for the information. So I think, I really think, you know, storytelling right now is really key. Um, and just, you know, being open and honest about what you know, what you don't know, um, not, not trying to uh, project 
airs of confidence that maybe don't make sense during this time. Like, I think there's something about um, 